And that's Good it, boys. Uh, We're live around the world. How's it going? Good afternoon. We're uh, me and Brett are joined on our usual Monday morning spot mm. with uh, the Whiffin Twins, who, as we say regularly on the show, you should go follow on all the social media, such as YouTube and Instagram. Mm -hmm. But unlike me, who just does YouTube, these guys are actually more talented at swimming than they are at YouTube, and that's not a slight of their YouTube. It's a, it's more of a you know, how impressed I am by their swimming. Mm. But um, between the two of them, they're like the best two Irish distance swimmers ever um, in mm. history. Uh, you know, they're the only, I mean, you're both under 15 minutes short course, which I think you're the only two Irish guys under 15 minutes. And, uh, you know, m more recently, Dan went over to Stockholm, to Sweden, and done some rather impressive swimming with a 14, 34.9, which Damn! Jesus, that's quick. <laughs> which I think the most impressive thing about that is it's making me and Brett excited about distance swimming, which, mm, you know, mm, mm. who would have thought, eh, Brett? <laughs> Mate, who would have thought? I tell you what, last time I got excited about distance swimming, I was standing on the pool deck in Fukuoka, 2001, to watch Grant Hackett uh, destroy that 1500 that he did at the, at the World Championships. Uh, boys, you ever watch that swim? Um. I don't think I, you can't, I, I've watched it. his. Um, I watched it when he had the world record when he went fourteen thirty four. Was it that? Was that when it was? I think that was. Uh, that's when he got it, right? He got it in Fukuoka yeah. two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cl classic swim. But anyway, hey, listen. Congratulations, boys. Uh, take the floor for a second. Tell us. Uh, tell us about this uh, incredible swimming you guys have been doing. Yeah. So, well, we can start off with preparation i guess so we did two weeks before stockholm i went to irish uh, nathan was fully rested for that and um yeah it was pretty decent i just basically swimming through the meat and nathan went pretty fast it's yeah like, i got some big i think my biggest pb was like 10 seconds in the 800 wow so wow pretty happy because i only i only got into distance swimming a year ago because genetics mm. i thought so you couldn't awesome. sprint is that what you're saying <laughs> well, I did like to that. No, we don't have any Twitch, so probably the like <laughs> person you ever see off the blocks. But uh, and then we are the Irish, and then two weeks after, I went to Stockholm, um, Sweden, where um, I kind of knew I was going to be fast, which was uh, I'm happy going into. I had some times that I wanted to go, and uh, yeah, I mean, two of my races I was very happy with. One of them was like okay, uh, the four, the 800 at the end of the meet was uh, I thought I'd be faster, but. Um, yeah, I'm still very happy with the swims. Mm. Yeah, well, good stuff. Now, listen, the swimming is great, but I got some twin questions. All right, I got twin girls that are that are 14, just about to turn 15. They're about to, and I, and I'm still trying to figure them out. So I need some twin help. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have some twin questions here, Sonny. All right, so listen, so are you? Can you two read each other? thoughts or feeling can you feel what the other person's feeling uh yeah so like no not really but i guess uh see when you like uh say i think of something or like i think of a song you know like nathan could probably end up like singing it you know what i mean it's oh. like kind of weird or what was today sometimes we just do stuff in sync as well that's kind of a bit freaky but uh wow. i feel like we can uh it, say if i'm watching daniel swim or he watches me i like Try telepathically say something to him, have the speed up. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he's in the pool swimming, you're on the side of the on the on the deck, and you're trying to telepathically get in his head, are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, how were you raised? Were you were you raised where you would you had the same bedroom? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. How long? Uh, up until when? Like, how long did you have the same bedroom yeah. for? We moved to Dublin when we were last year of school, or well, 18, 17, 17, 18. Uh, we okay. moved to uh, the National Centre in Ireland, and that was when we like stopped sharing our room, I guess, 17-ish. What was that like for the first time? How how strange was that to actually be in different rooms for the first time? Uh, well, we were still in the same house, so it wasn't that strange, but it's a lot better. I mean, I prefer not sharing a room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess we got our own space now. And then I guess also it's kind of weird because um, before COVID, we never spent time apart. And then yeah. um, I think it was before the Olympic trials around December time, I think, wasn't it? 
November, December. Yeah. Uh, Nathan wasn't allowed to swim in Loughborough, but I was because I was. Um, I had the, like you had to get a certain time to stay swimming, and mm. um, so I think we didn't see each other for four months or something like that. Wow! So that was the longest. Wow. We were. But it was kind of good preparation then for going into the Olympics because oh. then he wasn't going to be there. So then I had a practice basically. Yeah. Now, do you guys have? Do you feel like you have different personalities? Uh, yeah. 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 Nathan's like funnier. I guess. Oh, oh really? <laughs> boy, we'll That's pretty. Us. Oh yeah. Uh, you guys, you guys notice it in each other as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, guess. I think so. Yeah. But, yeah. Sonny, you got any twin questions here? Yeah. Um... Not really. I, I've, I've been more. enjoying your your twin questions. We have got some questions in the comments though that are more yeah, swimming related. Brett, okay. All right. Uh... All right. One more question here about about twinning. Um, did you <laughs> were you in the same classroom? Did you have the same teacher? And up until when? Uh, we well, we still we still this. we still have the same teachers. We do the same oh. course in university. So. Oh. Oh really? What are yeah. you studying? A computer science. Okay, so like, there's even similarities there. Do you guys like the same food? Uh, well, I I'm the chef, so I make it all. Yeah. Oh, so. oh wow! So you have to, Dan, you have to eat whatever he puts in front of you. Yeah. That's, <laughs> a... <laughs> that's classic. Now, are you two competitive with each other or not? Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess we were really competitive when we were younger because our parents wouldn't let us do the same events. That's why uh, Nathan's only just started doing distance training now because my, I guess my parents, we look so when we were younger. Nathan does backstroke, I do freestyle, and then mm. I am is like a flash where we race each other and fly where we race each other. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah, we are very competitive. Nathan's just been moved up to uh, my distance squad in Loughborough. He was in the one below before, and um, like this morning was my first training session. Like because last week I had a little break of a week where I didn't do that many meters, but. This week I went full back in. This morning we were racing every rep. Like, oh really? <laughs> it was meant to be like clear swimming at like one thirty heart rate, and we were just going at it for the whole two hour session. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> we're getting some good questions come in here. Let's. This is the first one from Oliver. What's the easiest way to tell you apart in videos? Um... Uh, I don't even know. We used to have different <laughs> color hair. They were hard. You know, I've got a tattoo on my forearm, but you can't even see that. Probably in videos. <laughs> Maybe I should put name tags up for some of the videos. To see, which one see, my twins, my twins have, um, my twins have different haircuts. So, but you guys yeah. have very similar haircuts and very similar glass. Why'd you go with the same glasses? Couldn't you at least choose different <laughs> glasses? Yeah, our parents already made us change, uh, have different glasses, but I think we just we went to the shop there like a year ago. Like we both like the same kind, we just chose them. <laughs> <laughs> We're making it harder for people. Yeah, serious. You're making it real tough. Now, <clears throat> here's another one. Do you have uh, two passports, Irish and British, or Irish only? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we, well, we have both, but I really only use my Irish passport. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Something against the British? <laughs> I just haven't renewed it. Always, I'll be swimming. I'll be swimming for Ireland, so you have to use your RS passport. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, perfect. All right, there it is. There's some, there's some twin questions. We got through all the twin stuff. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. You I know, like ben that. Titley has twins as well. What's that? Ben Titley has twins as well. Oh he, right, he ben, was, yeah. Them as yeah, well. That's right. That's right. You had like that conversation that. literally the other day, Brett. With ben. Yeah, yeah, with Ben, yeah, yeah, that's right. That was that was last week. Yeah, he has got twins as well. Yeah, a lot of twins out there. Like, it's it's crazy. But listen, mate, it, it still freaks me out when I when I look at my twin girls. So this was this was the story with my twin girls. So we had we had the same room growing up, but they had separate beds. But one of them would always go into the other person's bed. So like I would close the door. They'd, get, they'd be in their beds. I'd close the door. I'd come back five minutes later, and Lily was always in Yasmin's bed, and they were, like, curled up next to each other all the way up till the age of, like, I don't know. They probably, they probably still do it from time to time now, to be honest. Like, they have separate rooms now, but I'm, I'm sure they probably still sneak in and just sleep with each other at times. It's just like this, this comfort thing. I don't know. Did you guys ever experience that? But between the two girls, it was just very, it was very loving. You know what I mean? I think maybe when we were young, maybe I don't. Yeah. Probably, I don't think so. Now, but no. Uh, <laughs> no, we still live. Well, he makes you food. Week. He makes you food now, so that's loving. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, like, uh, it technically pays me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Look at swim nerd. Swim nerd says he's a twin and he's a married. He's married to a twin. Did Did so we know really this? That Nate's a twin. <laughs> I knew Nate was a twin. I didn't know he. I didn't know he was married. Well, I guess I knew he was married to a twin. I just didn't remember it. Wow, that's wild. A lot of twins out there. My, my, my girlfriend's also a twin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is she really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you yeah, have a lot right. of twin questions for her? Like, do you do you ask her twin stuff? No, not not really. People just love this. Is the twin question that everyone loves? It's just the do you ever try and be the other person? Like SB's asked oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess well, you we, haven't bothered doing this. Well, we've done it in school, uh, but not in swimming. I think swimming. I don't know. That's 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 maybe if I swam Nathan's 1500, uh, it might be a bit noticeable now, but I think maybe a, we might be similar in a couple of years, I guess. But. Give us a school example. What'd you do? Uh, uh, like sweat. swap classes, because sometimes we were in different classes, but you know, we just swap. Or like I didn't turn up to one, Nathan went instead, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Was this like prearranged? Like you two had a little agreement here? Hey, let's let's swap classes today and see what happens. <laughs> It was a nightmare, though, because I didn't have a clue what was going on. <laughs> we oh, I love but we, it. We do get picked awesome. up all the time. But normally, <laughs> I've got a good story, actually. We were in Edinburgh uh, at, the, at, the, at the Ridge National in, like, March. And um, our, yeah. our national performance director uh, was yeah. there for Adam, John, John right. Rudd. And uh, mm. he was thought Nathan was me. And Nathan just went along with it. Like for like 15 minutes <laughs> and then I went up to John after the race and I was like oh what did you think of my swim and he was just like I've already told you <laughs> little bastards we've been, told, we've been told not to uh, go along with anymore we should tally people up and talking to the wrong person <laughs> do your parents ever mix you guys up okay. uh... I don't think my, my, my dad does it but I feel like my mum just Accidentally calls me Nathan, but she knows I'm Daniel most of the time. Kind of oh, right, all the yeah. same with Nathan. Yeah, yeah. I, I do that Andy's, quite often. I know Andy's yeah. having a nightmare at the moment. Yeah, our coach, he's uh, struggling to tell us apart, I think. Oh. Because we literally yeah. wear the same goggles and same hat and same oh. trunks. But... Oh, yeah, you can't <laughs> do that. Come on, give him a chance, guys. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, that's classic. All right. All right. Let's get into some swimming, Sonny. I know you're chomping at the bit here. Let's do it. Let's well, I, do I, it. I still, uh, I still wanted to keep going with some of these questions just quickly, like uh, maybe rapid fire through. But Tom G asked, you know, are you going to altitude begin before Worlds? Andy Manny took you guys up to altitude recently. Um, good, good, positive um, thoughts. Uh, well, we won't be going back before World Champs, but um, the next time we'll be going back is in October again. Um, okay, but um, and maybe we do three in the Olympic cycle. I'm not really sure. We're going, yet. We're going to Turkey. We go, I'm going to Turkey, uh, Gloria, yep. in um, oh, yeah. June. So we do our warm weather training camp instead of going altitude again. And then Seth Collie. And yeah, well, Seth Collie as well for a meet too. I mean, going straight into it because Lewis has asked, but uh, I mean, and, and talking about swims that have been going on this weekend, but the Berlin Open's been happening in Germany, and. Mm. So these races here, I mean, you boys can can agree, probably the biggest depth in distance swimming outside of a world meet, right? Like, I think six guys under 15 minutes in the 1500. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. It's like, I think I think fifth, fourth place or fifth place in the 1500 was 1445 or something. Um, yeah. And I mean, yeah, Florian did go 0 0.02 quicker than you, uh, Dan. And, and Lewis has asked, do you think you can beat him? I know the answer, but uh, you can tell us. Yeah, 100%. Uh, <laughs> I, I think this could be a really exciting world champs, especially because of this big, uh, like, oh, there's so many good distance swimmers. I mean, the only problem is, I guess, with Ger the German Berlin Open, I don't, I'm not sure if it's their trials or not, but as you said, there's five of them there going sub-15, but only two of them can go. So um, I guess it's more their top two would be uh, Wellbrock and Lucas Mertens. Uh, so they're going to be the ones in the race. And you've got Bobby Fink, who's going to be in that final. Uh, Romanchuk, who was also in that Berlin meet. Um, Peltineri. And um, yeah, I guess it's going to be uh, very stacked. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to the race. Um, I've actually never been in a 1500 final long course. Uh, so it's going to be very fun. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. 
Hey, here's a question. <clears throat> How do you, once you get to a certain level like you're at now, guys, um, but especially with that, that swim that you just popped, um, how do you get consistency now? How do you, how are you able to then say, well, that's something I can repeat, you know, anytime I want it now, rather than just saying, well, that was a one-off. It was a lucky swim. How do you get consistency with that type of level of swim? Well, I think it also, I'm not, I'm not very old, I guess. I'm probably the youngest in the field by like four years. Right. Um, and I've got on my head anyway that I'm going to go way quicker than that. Um, so I, I mean, basically I look back at my swim from Stockholm with my coach, I we took it apart completely uh, to see what we can where we can make time up and go faster to get under the world record. And like as soon as I finished the race, I knew I made two mistakes straight away, which I could have gone faster with. But I think mm. the consistency element is that I just have to keep what I'm doing in training up. I mean, what I'm doing at the moment is just like a building this base ready for the Olympics next year. That. I'm just going to keep hitting these times, getting faster and faster towards the Olympics. And then, um, but I don't know, I'd love to have a race in a 1500 where there is no competition that you know before going in that you're going to win. But at the moment, plus with a stack field, that it's going to, it could go either way. So it's going to be quite fun. Give me, a, give me a set each that gives you guys confidence that when you, when you swim it on a regular basis, you know that that's, that's your indicator set. Yeah, well... I, I, every distance swimmer does the 3100s. I mean, we still do it, uh, right, the best average. Right. Uh, I'll, we do, I think we do it differently, maybe. Yeah, we do do it differently to other people, though. And also, uh, well, I'll give you two. So we do the 3100s, where we go like, um, the, do them, we could either do them all off 140 or we could do a descending interval where we go, you go five off 145 or 135 and keep going down. Mm -hmm. And then my. Down to what? Do what do you get down to? Um, I don't know what it was, 105, one of, one, yeah, something like that, 105. Oh, wow, shit. Okay. And then um, we also do a test set of a time three fares a meter, like uh, probably four times in our season to know basically <laughs> so you can compare times on that. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Now, Nathan, you've only been swimming distance for a year. Does that mean – by next year, you're going to be, be better than Daniel? <sighs> well, I hope so. Well, we'll try, at least I get to train with him, so I see what it's kind of like to get close to a world record in terms of training. Oh, so you're, you're, you're looking at this guy of like, hey, I'm going to keep an eye on him. I'm going to beat him one day. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, <gasps> I'm, I'm already trying to close the gap already, and we've only been training together for a week. So, <laughs> Wow. Wow. People calling you for the W in Paris already. Look at this. <laughs> well we do like we won like a podium one two in paris we're not saying which oh. way it go but, you know. <laughs> uh, nice but i think to be honest i think if nathan just keeps up another year of training i think he'll qualify for this olympics um easily to be honest i think yeah. i know what it's like to train at a certain pace and from we're basically the same so we know what like training equates to racing so like I I know like for example I could give like, if we did thirty one hundreds and he held fifty eight O's then you're easily gonna qualify for the Olympics, something like that. Right, right, yeah. Um hey, what, sorry, yeah. Just a buddy. No, go, hey, go what was it. the P B you got in the fifteen hundred at the Scottish short course meet? Was it like a minute and a half or something? Oh yeah. Uh I think I was sixteen twenty and then I went fifteen fifty seven. Fourteen no, fifty seven. Oh wow. One minute 23, 1500 PB in December. So, if you want to see the trajectory of Nathan Whiffin, well, you just have to look at that, right? You know, <laughs> full of that, and it's game over for everyone. Yeah, mm. I actually really enjoyed that Scottish short haul. It's quite fun, I thought. Yeah, you were there as well, Sammy. I, was, I, I come saw you. Yeah, yeah. You went 14 11, right? For, 14, 14 14 14. 14 14. Yeah. Good going. Yeah. Good going. All right, give, it, know, give each other some props here. I want I want to know the strength of each of you. So Nathan, tell me the strength of Dan. Uh I think it's just mostly mental, I'd say. Like uh I, I feel like nobody's got a better mental than like a, what than give me an example of what that means. Like if he'll say something like I'll give you an example he told me where so before uh, he qualified the Olympics, nobody thought he was going to get it. It wasn't on the, the Olympic long list or anything to go mm -hmm. in uh, Tokyo. 
And then the, is it the Irish Olympic? Who was it in the call room? You said? I can't remember. Uh, it was uh, something to do with Irish Olympics. And one of the main people was in the call room. And Dan and I went up to him before the race and was like, uh, I'm just about to go get this uh, Olympic time. And then walked out and then did it. Oh, nice. I, think I like that. that. Uh, oh, oh yeah, I've done it. Uh, I've done it a couple of times actually <laughs> to people, but I don't normally tell people what I'm going to go before. Uh, a lot of the time, I just normally say to Nathan, and then. Uh, do you just know yeah, it's again. coming to you, Dan? You know, you can feel it's coming. Yeah, I think. Well, I just got a lot of confidence in me and my coach and stuff like that, and from training that I just, I, I, I like. Yeah, you, know, you know, like visualization. You probably do a lot of this as like a sprinter, uh, but mm -hmm. like. Do you ever like dream about your race before you do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do it every time before I like have a big meet and I always know what time I'm going to go from the dream. Wow. Wow. Like the, is this dream a week before the night before? When's it happen? It can be like, I don't know. The longest out before was like four weeks, I think. Wow. So you'll yeah. just wake I'm up like, and be I... like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. It's that's happened like it's happened stuff, like four four years. I think it's happened. No, it's happened since I joined Loughborough. I like before the Olympics. I knew what before the Olympic uh, trials. I knew what I was going to go before the Olympics. Before Worlds last year, and then before Stockholm, I also kind of knew what I was going to go. Wow, that's crazy. What, what about Nathan? Dan, tell me what's his strength. Um, I got. Um, let me I just think about this. It's like, I guess he's the, the main one I'd say would be like, um, I don't know, I guess he doesn't really give up. If you know, it's kind of the same as like a mentality thing, but I don't know. I know that I'm always up for a race. Yeah, he won't like say, for example, I'm like the fastest in the 1500 in Loughborough, and the next person's maybe 30 seconds behind, so everybody will just bin it off and not race me. Okay, a lot in training, but Nathan will always race, no matter what. So I like that a lot, and I think it's uh, it's like it shows that uh, that uh, like in a race situation that you would never g give up if somebody's pushing the pace or something like that. And I think that's what his strength wow. is that he just never gives up. What about this last one? Last one for me, Sonny, right here. Um, you're Dan, you're pushing up on a record now that a lot of people say was done by somebody who was cheating right taking performance enhancing drugs you're pushing up on you're you're this close to this record so if you're that close to a record of somebody that was was cheating and and you you must have some physical gifts like physically you must be a, a freak like you could do some i mean i've seen grant hackett train right i've seen his mentality as well but like physically he could do some things in the pool you must be able to do some crazy stuff in the pool that other people just can't hang with don't you think uh yeah i mean oh, we did that 500 set yeah I, I mean i was said on the swim swim podcast last week we did a set of five six five hundreds <coughs> off five the, when i mentioned that held, <laughs> where i held five minutes or sub just under five minutes for the whole reps and like i don't know if anybody in the world can do some of the sets i don't really and also i don't know what other people in the world go because nobody really shares the sets at all and what they're going uh we're but trying to get I've them down told, we're trying to get all these sets yeah from what i've been told that uh especially my coach that and also like even the head of uh, like you know kev renshaw um he's mm -hmm. a british distance coach uh he's he's coached so many olympians and he's said that he's never seen people go that fast ever stuff like mm. that mm. so you've just got a freaky you, gift that was what i was gonna say when you said it but we've got some mutual friends and they tell me some of the times that dan and nathan go in training really? and they're mind blown like you know, I've worked with some good athletes as well. And I remember doing like a set of 400s with Max and Chad last year in uh, South Africa. And I was like, wow, this is a, this is insane. Because like Max is a 346, 400 freestyler. He raced Dan last week, went 347. Like he's not a slouch at this event. And um, Chad beat him on a 400 push by like seven seconds. And I was like, this is insane what I've just witnessed. And mm. then Reese was like, no, 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 no. Look, look at these times with Dan. And I'm like, what this is unholy like just anything you do and you do it regularly as well like you're going fast regularly like the times i've seen from from you are just mind bending like mm. yeah. yeah i don't know i like uh i guess i always like going fast and training i i always say i like prefer i prefer training and racing because 
training, you get so many opportunities to go at these fast times and racing, you get it once. So, like, I think that's also kind of like a good secret if you enjoy training so much and you get way faster. Right. Hey, what was your race strategy the other day in terms of popping this time? What was the strategy going in and how did how did you execute it? Um, so, uh, I guess, well, everybody has that race strategy of like three, five hundreds, I guess. You split right, it up right. into. Uh, but I think I've learned from past experiences and races that, um, especially uh, like, I don't know, for the Commonwealth Games example, uh, bl- blowing up at 800 meters uh, from going out too fast. Uh, so I think my target this time was to go out at a pace that I felt comfortable and just, just try hang on at the second half of the race. I mean, I said go out comfortable. I saw when I um I went on 800 PB at 800 um, in that race, but I think my main target in that race is just stay in front of Misha Romanchuk for the whole race and not let him catch me back. So I think mm. I got a body length of the first hundred and then just kept extending the lead basically. Mm. Mm. Wow, I love it. I love it. A lot of people saying that uh, your network is the greatest. Uh, where, do, where do people find you, boys? Uh, well, we have we both have individual Instagrams, and then we recently made a yeah. – it's called the Whiffin Network. And then if you like mm-hmm. put that into abbreviation, it spells TWN, which looks like twins. So that's where we went We went for that. But oh. I don't know. We'll, yeah, that's what we just do, a load of like photography stuff and that. But I guess our main platform is YouTube at the moment. We're posting every Sunday. And yeah, the Stockholm blog will be out next week and it gives you a little insight into my racing. So. This, uh, yeah. this blog here was their prep for Stockholm. It's brilliant. You can literally see what these guys are doing on a daily basis. You know, home, pool, gym, great quality. Just got a new camera, haven't you, boys? Yeah, we right, did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, g- g- give, them, give them some love. Actually, talk about world events, but... um. U.S. Swimmen had their open water trials recently. Um, Katie Grimes, uh, obviously a great pool swimmer, qualified for that. And also, I'm just reading Nate's swim spam email here, but the uh, the open water Tokyo um, sort of podium was Welbrock, Pelchineri, and Rozovsky. Do you boys think about doing open water? Like, we're seeing the best 1,500 guys doing open water, both women and men's. There's got to be some sort of comparison, right? You, you swim fast for a long period of time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to open water, but um, maybe not. Well, I mean, I technically can qualify for the Olympics in open water in the pool now. So if you get the FINA A time or Olympic qualifying A time in um, the 1500, 800, then you qualify for the 10K as well. So, um, mm. I mean, I could do it at the Olympics. I don't know if I will or not. Uh, also, my coach doesn't really want me to do open water. Uh, so, is the 10k before the swimming or after the swimming? Uh, after. Oh well, you may as well, right? You may as well just go and win it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just heard some story. <laughs> I just heard some stories about 10k that I don't know. I feel like maybe not this season or next season. So. What, yeah. what about you, Nate? Uh, well, I've only I'm only up in the so I used to do like 55k and now I'm upping it to what I think I'll go to like 75. Yeah, 75. A week. A week. We're to like 75 a week, so I don't think that's a I, I, I might just stick to pool swimming for a bit longer and then I'll see maybe when I start getting getting pretty good at holding 75k, I'll go up to a bit more. Yeah, train with like Hector and everybody. Yeah, we do have a lot of open water swimmers in Loughborough. Hector! Um, <laughs> love that show that's one of my favorite favorite movies um yes. what, do we, what do we got here so nate's saying how much time do you guys spend creating content oh uh well we need to make sure we have a vlog out every sunday i well like in terms of like i don't know creating them we just film like a day maybe a day the whole day and then it takes me like three hours to edit a vlog maybe i mix a thumbnail and I don't know. So we split it up. I guess I make, I cre- like create the vlogs. I'll edit them, put them all together. Nathan will make the thumbnail and then Nathan makes the YouTube shorts as well. Mm. Um, what do you, so what do you use for editing? Uh, Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro. There we go. See, letting you, letting you guys in on a little, little uh, of the tactics. Okay. I love it. Man, distance swimming. Hey, there's a lot of names out there these days. Guys throwing times around. I mean, it's a, it's a very competitive field these days. Do you guys 
do you guys look at competition? I mean, you just said you kind of wanted to put a body length on him and hold it there. Like how much of how much of that goes into the race itself? Like when there's people around you, like you got you gotta have the best distance swimmers in the world all racing each other this year at Worlds and next year at the Olympics. You're all gonna be lined up against each other. So how much of that goes into the race itself of like, well, I gotta keep an eye on this guy, I gotta know where this guy is, I gotta, you know, like is that going through your head at that time? Uh, yeah, so I mean, going into it, you're gonna have a set plan out. Basically, uh, you're also gonna do your background as well going into the race. You gotta know how certain people swim their 1500, mm. and like mm. for example, Peltonary will go out hard and try hold on. Uh, Bobby mm. Fink will be last. Don't be near him. Last 50, basically, <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody else kind of swims it the same way. Go at halfway, and. Um, so, yeah, I guess that plays into the part that you got to know before going into it. And then also, 1500 is very long, which is, I, I kind of like. It's not like a 50. You have a lot of time to think um, and have a lot of time to make a move uh, in the race. So it makes it a lot. Uh, well, I think that's why I prefer the longer distance. Yeah, and at but... least if you make a mistake, you can. Yeah, yeah, it's not like a 100. If you make a mistake, you're kind of done. Or a 50, where if you make a mistake in a 1500, you can have a bit of time to fix it. Yeah. And stuff like that, but I guess going into it, you do you all focus on your own race plan, and then maybe the last five hundred meters will be where everybody's looking at each other, something like that. Wow. Right, okay. Uh, so there's rumors. Rumor. Rumor has it you're doing the four medley at Worlds. Is that a rumor? <laughs> nah, I'm not doing. <laughs> no, I I don't really like medley. I mean, I went four eleven short course in december but i'm not touching it again i i don't know my breast shook's terrible i split like 114 or something like that mm. what about this world record is it achievable in the 800 um not this year i don't think but uh definitely in the future to be honest from where i want to take distant swimming in my head i think that that needs to go really okay Nice. Just for people that don't know, that's seven minutes 32, 346, 345. I'm pretty sure the splits were. Oh, that's quick, hey? Sonny, your camera looks good today, man. I can see the blue in your eyes. What, what are you using? I'm just using my new camera, set it up. I normally use what is my it? phone. What's the new camera? It's a uh, Sony A7. Same oh, as what I always use. Yeah, hey. we've, both, we've both joined the A7, A7 crew. Looks good today. You look clear as crystal. I might have to get on the A7 crew. Yeah, it's good. It's good life to have. Um, let's yeah. talk about the rest of the world uh, in terms of what was going on. Um, there was some. There was the Australian Championships. Did you guys watch that? No, uh, no. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. No, no, they didn't. They didn't care. The Irish boys didn't care about the, the Aussies. Results. Yeah. Are there, are there any know. Aussies? Are there any Aussies that are in the mix for you? Like uh, that, that can swim. Uh, I mean, Australia has obviously had this great distance background. I mean, there's always going to be one in there, I guess. Wasn't there one guy that just dropped something, Sonny? S Sam Shaw is the guy that beat you at the uh, Commonwealth Games last year, Dan. He went 342. Yeah. Sam Shaw, yeah, him. He, Dan's given no right. props to anyone. Oh, him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got a good history in the past. Uh, yeah, You know <laughs> Sam Shaw? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw the... The 342 and the 400, yeah, it's pretty It's pretty quick. I mean, it's the 10th fastest or something ever I saw on some stats, but, yeah, quick. Are you trying to get your 400 down, or you could care less about the 400? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't really matter to me, to be honest. I think, well, it's at 344 at the moment, and, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm happy enough with that for the season, to be honest. If I don't improve on it, it's fine. Uh, but I guess I do want it to be in the 340s. I think everybody wants to be close to the world record in any event, but I would like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sonny, keep us going here. Talk talk to us about... So just on distance free, there was a, a guy who went 742 at the Russian Championships, a 19-year-old, so even younger than you boys. I had never heard mm -hmm. of him. I don't know if you boys had, but uh, he's probably been banned mm -hmm. since before he could have been at any meet to race you guys. So... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but also coming out the Russian champs, we have to talk about Evgenia Chikanova, the 200 breast world record by a staggering mm. 1.4 seconds mm. to go 217.5. Um, 
She is one of the most impressive talents I've ever seen. I uh, was, was on the Energy Standard team with her. I uploaded a, a reel a couple of days ago where she'd done a 25 kick on the board with uh, just two kicks. So she got 25 meters with just two breaststroke kicks. Wow. And, um, you know, people are like, well, how did she break the world, world record by 1.4 seconds? And it's like, this girl is, uh, is, she's been good since she's 14. She mm. come fourth at the Olympics at 16. Mm. It's understandable she's got a big PB, right? You know, we're talking to two boys here that are going one minute 20 PBs mm. um, and 17 second PBs at an elite level. Um, and it's not a surprise to me. She, I mean, I'm not joking. Her coach would have a kick for a half an hour straight in a, in a streamline with a snorkel where she had to do the minimum kicks every 50 long course. And she'd get like poked with a stick every time she didn't glide long enough. Insane. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, super impressive swim. It's 274, 275 maybe. Um, yeah, crazy. So crazy. the coach had the stick out. You think the coach, you think you could do that in, in England? You can get a stick out and poke the swimmer? It wasn't like a forceful poke. It was just like a like a nudge. Um, it was just a nudge to say, be better. Um, no, I get more. that. But if you had a stick, Sonny, if you walking around the pool deck with a stick and just kind of nudging, <laughs> nudging Dan and, and Nathan here, you think that that'd be okay? I, I'd probably get suspended within about a day. <laughs> you guys, you guys, be okay with the nudge if you're doing a distance set and your coach is just nudging you with the stick? Well, while, while I'm swimming, probably yeah. not. <laughs> Maybe at the end of the wall, you know, <laughs> get a float out. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I, like I mean, it. any world record's pretty impressive, and that one was definitely impressive because it wasn't a world record before that set at the Olympics. So, yeah, it was well. Tatiana Schoemaker, 218.9 to win Tokyo. Um, and, yeah, she just dropped, yeah, to 217.5. So, just insanity, yeah. yeah, massive drops. But that's what we want to see. Like, you know, why not just just nibble under a world record? You can smash one, eh, hey, Dan? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, funny enough, on, on that, when you're doing a distance set, does does Andy or any of the coaches, do they interact with you in any way? Say you're doing like a 3,000 or a 1,000. Do they... Do they you know, shout at you certain instructions or have you used a headset or anything so they can actually, you know, that's a long time to be swimming without any, if we're doing a set of 25s, I can give you feedback every length, you know, like length for now yeah. or kick a little stronger. But when you're swimming for 20 minutes straight, like what, what, how does that work? Uh, I mean, Andy doesn't do any like signals or anything while I swim, but I mean, he might be up and down the pool, just, you know, waving me off or whatever. Yeah. But if I'm good, that'll be it. I think, I think, Kind of just, and especially as long reps, I don't know, the clock is like behind you in Loughborough so you on the wall, that. so you can just always check off the wall, like looking at a lap counter or something like that. So, Hey, Dan, you said you made two mistakes in that swim the other day. What were the two mistakes? Um, well, the mistakes for me, so I'd say that um, head, my head position was really off on breathing and then double breathing and stuff like that. Oh, double is double breathing something that you do in practice when you're when you're tired? Um, well, like not really. I try to like not uh, like do it at all, to be honest, because it's not really a good habit to have. But um, I mean, I did it twice in that race, so I'm just trying to eliminate it completely. Is there a time, boys, where you're in a race and the pain sets in, and it's at it's at its peak? But then you come through it and, and past it, and then you're able to kind of kick on past the pain. Is that does that happen? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I, so you get you probably hit this pain barrier in like a race or a set where mm. you're gonna get, and then I think that's where like you can see like who the best is. To be honest, in the pool is when those people who are pushing past that uh, that barrier are gonna be the main swimmers, I guess. Who are going to be up for the medals? I think that's how it works, really. Man, we've got some boys in the comments section here. Look at this, eh? Yeah. Are you, are you guys friend, friendly with each other? Yeah, I think most, like, I don't know what it is, but I'm not sure what the quorum's like in a 50 or 100, but in the 1500, everybody's friendly, especially all the European people. I can see Florian here. I mean, he did really well um, there at the weekend. So, as he said, it's going to be a good summer. So you're not trying to like you're not you're not talking shit in the call room. Uh, no, not really. Everybody's <laughs> just like, good luck. So that's it. Oh, 
Come on. Uh, come I heard on. that story as well, and I was like, oh, I thought it'd be a lot better. <laughs> That's not Bobby Fink. I'm, there's no way that's Bobby Fink. No, I think people are, I think there's who's, some fake accounts in the chat. Who's um, pretending? Yeah. Who's pretending to be people now? Like that. That's definitely Florian, you know. But that's not Bobby. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's true though. He's, he's got that last fifty speed. <laughs> um. Give me. Give me your thoughts on on Florian. What's it, what's his strength? Uh, well, I've actually, I've never trained with him, so I can't really tell you, but I guess from looking at races, I mean, he's the, the main, him, he, well, him and Pelton Air, I guess, and Roman Chuk have been on top for a while and he's coming on out with a lot of the wins and especially he does 10 K he's Olympic champion and he, so he's one of those people you can just go for ages. So, um, I guess he's, that's the reason why he's so good at the moment is because he can just hold these times. Right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right, Sonny, what else we got here? So let's go to some sprinting. Um, Nathan and Dan did say earlier that you don't even think in sprints. You just sort of dive in and swim. And, you know, <laughs> it's not like distance swimming where they're, they're you know, they're proper athletes. But uh, we had an Israeli record by Marion Trute. We talked to his mm. coach on this mm. show probably about a month ago, 21.84. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think that's a very nice swim. And also national record. National record. For, yeah, Israeli record. Um, among, alongside that, we had uh, Florent Manadou, who we've talked about on this show, get back under 22, which is great to see. 21.9, and he had a really solid uh, 50, 50 fly as well. I'm not sure what time he went, but I saw that on James's story. Um, we also had Benedetta Pilato go 30 flat on the 50 breast. Um, we also saw 22.6 from a, a Russian in the 50 fly. That's uh, one of the fastest swims of all time, quicker than... Uh, Quicker than Milorad Kavic. What, quicker than what Kavic went in 09. So that's a, a pretty nat mad start. That was the year he went sub 50. Um, uh, we also had some Belgium action going on. We obviously talked to uh, mm. uh, Fred, Fred Vergnu uh, a couple of weeks ago on this show. Um, Roos Vannon, I can't say the name. Roos had got five golds and she was, you know, on it. 59 backstroke, 26 fly, 54 freestyle. Seems Is that like one of his girls? So I think that's one of his girls, yeah. Um, oh, so cool. he, he said good. he was going to come back on the show and talk about that, didn't he? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get him next week. And then also just not actually on results. Oh, Hungary Nationals. Uh, Hungary, yeah. Christoph Milak won a few events. He won the 100 free. He won the 100, 200 fly. He won the 200 free. 50.8, 150. It's crazy, isn't it? He goes PB plus two and goes 152. It's just like me like, me like insane. Good. Insane. Um, a 21, 21, eight from Seb Jabo, uh, the sprinter. Well, Mate, I'm telling, okay, here, here's my thing on sprinting, uh, Dan and, and Nathan. <laughs> here it is, okay. On, on the 50 freestyle, right? I'm going to give you some guarantees here, okay? Guarantees for the world. Let's let's just call it the world championships because that's the next thing. Okay. Guarantee. You want to be top 16 at the world championships. Guaranteed, you go under 22. That's it. Go under 22, you're guaranteed top 16 at the world championships. You want to be top eight at the world championships, you go under 21.7. Okay. So there's point three there between 16 and eighth, right? So you get that. And then you got your 21 7 crew all right you want to be top eight if you want to be top five you go 21 5 okay there's your top five if you want to be top three you go you go 21 3 okay there's your top three if you want to win you go 21 flat okay that's your guarantees yeah. So it's as simple as that. Like that, that it's already guaranteed. Twenty-one flat gets you the win. Twenty-one three gets you the podium. Twenty-one five gets you top five. Twenty-one, twenty-one seven gets you top eight. Under twenty-two gets you top sixteen. So if we already know that, you just got to go out there and do it now, right? Yeah. Simple. Fair enough. Simple. Who do you think will win world champs in the fifty and the hundred? Well, the hundred as well. Well, Papa Beach, I guess, going to win the hundred. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my money's always going to be on him because I think he's got the uh, – and now he's got the experience because he's done it before, right? Like he's got the world record. He's already cracked that. He's got the coach 
I think is an incredible. He's got he's got a unit around him. He's got his family. He's got his he's got his, he's got his people, right? Like he, it's all set. Like he's he's put himself in a position to be successful with the people that he's got around him. So I think that's one of his strengths. Uh, physically, he's got the gifts, right? I think his mentality is kind of like what you guys have. Like that mentality is above and beyond the normal sprint mentality. I think he's really got it together. Um, I think he has everything he needs, right, to to continue to win. So I'm going to say that Popovich wins the hundred for sure and the two hundred. Like I think he's got, I think he's got the skills to win both, and and he's got the points on the board. And I don't think he's getting any slower, just like Nathan. I think he's getting faster. So I think that, um, yeah, he's he's the guy to win. Now the fifty. The 50 is different. The 50 is not a crapshoot, but there's a couple of guys that if they're on their game, they could be in the money, right? Like like Flo Manadu has proven over the past 10 years that when he's on his game, he can be top three consistently, right? Like so Flo, Flo's a guy. You got Ben Proud who went through and won pretty much everything there was to win last year. Um Bruno? Michael Michael Andrews done it in the past where he's he swam real fast and and I don't think he's um getting any slower either. Uh he's he's got potential to be there on the US side. Um but yeah, I think I look the the money is if you're not if you're not under if you're not under 1440 in the 1500, you're not getting on the podium, right? Yeah, I don't to be honest, I think it's getting away that if you're not Sub 1435, you're not getting on the podium. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it's the same in the 50. If you're not under 21 3, you're not getting on the podium. You know, like it's just there's there's just the where you gotta be, right? It's the same in any race. It's like here's your guaranteed podium, right? If you're under 35 in the 1500, there's your guaranteed podium. If you're under 21 3 in the 50, that's your guaranteed podium. Now, there's only a few boys that can be in that discussion. It's not a not a big group of people. Everyone says, oh, this kid went 21.8 and this kid went 21.9 and this kid went 21.7. That's kind of like going 14.45. Like, it's good. It's really good. But it's not 14.35. You know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's a massive difference between that. And, and, and most people would say, well, that's only like half a second per lap type thing. Well, half a second per lap is monumental in a 1500. It's the same in the 50. You're talking a couple of tenths here and there. That's monumental in a 50 freestyle. So there's only a few boys that are in that discussion. The 21-8 crew, if you guys aren't improving, you're going to be a top 16, top eight swimmer at best. That's all you're going to be. You're never going to be on the podium unless you're down in the 21-3, 21-4 club, right? So I'm just looking through swim span here. And uh, I don't know if to, I think we could see people swim sub 22 at Worlds and not make a semi final. Norway had their first 21 point swimmer with Nick Lear. There's probably been like 16 guys this weekend go sub 22. Like, yeah, but they only take top two, right? I know, I know, but they're all from like, as I said, now we have Norway going 21 and we have, yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like we're getting there. Well. But yeah, Tom yeah. Fannin went 21, yeah. Yet. Yeah. Tom, oh, yeah. Like, we, we, look, we, that's what I said. Twenty under twenty-two. If you don't go under twenty-two, you don't have a hope of being top sixteen. Nah, I, 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 we saw how quick World Short Course was, and I, I don't know. I think we're getting faster now. And I mean, that's the same thing to talk to, like, to ask you boys. Oh, yeah, my boy, uh, my boy uh, Ian Ho, Hong Kong, twenty-one at eight in the heats as well, uh, unshaved, unrested. Um, yeah, it's twenty-one to over the shot, and. Someone mentioned earlier, what, what do you reckon it's going to take to make a 1500 final now? Because that's the first step, going, going 14, 40, zip, 41, 42 in the heat just to make it back. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, it's one yeah. thing to say 21 all over the shop. It's like saying it's like saying 14 minutes all over the shop. It's not, it's not really 14 minutes. You know, like if you're, if you're not going under 1440, you're not even in the conversation for a medal. So it's like, yeah, there's plenty of guys going yeah, 1445, yeah, yeah. 1450, 1455. Okay, great. That that's great. But if, if you're not under 1440, you're not even in the conversation for a medal. You're just making up numbers, right? And it's the same in the 50. Like 218 is a yawn. Okay, it's a yawn. Like I don't care anymore. There's, there's there's 50 guys that can go 21 8. There's not many guys that can go 21 3, though. That's a whole nother level of swimming. And that's what I'm talking about. Get yourself in that club. 
stop you stop putting yourself in the yawn club. Nathan, come on, mate. Let's get under 1440 here, mate. Put yourself in the conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think to go on the point of when you said what like about making a final at Wells in a 1500, I do think though that people always think it's going to be a lot faster than it really is to make it in the 1500 because mm. it's the last day of the meet. So right. you've got people who do the 15 have always done the four and always done the eight and then do the 15. So then you're going to, people are tired and then it ends up being around the 1455 to make it back. But I think this world champs will be quicker to make a guess. Maybe we will see sub 1450, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was 1456 last year. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's the other thing is like, like what Dan just said, it's, it's tough to do it at the event too. Like it's easier to do it at an in-season swim or at your trials where all the conditions are perfect, but you put yourself in a, in a situation where you got to walk into a call room with, you know, 20 of the best swimmers in the world. And then, you know, things start to change a little, you know? Yeah. Um, that's what I think, you know, the pressure, the pressure to perform at that big meet um, is definitely there. Uh, this is true. This is true. So Sonny spitting facts. Brett's just waffling. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the best comment all day. Good point. Um, what else do we have? Anything else around the world? So, so uh, we not results Belgium. driven, but oh, gone. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say well, the Belgium nationals, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. one of so I, I went on a training camp with this guy called uh, Lucas Henvo, and uh, he went to Cal actually. Uh, there swam in the NC2As for them and uh, he dropped some pretty fast times I know I've trained with him so I know him quite well but yeah he was like 346 146 so it's also he's, pretty fast he's been training with Tom Rushton right recently yeah I think so yeah yeah he's been training with Tom and Siobhan and Craig Orr and, and them guys over in a a altitude as well there's a lot of results people have gone altitude and then raced uh, a couple of weeks after and seem to be doing pretty well so yeah he was up in uh, Flagstaff with them guys um but yeah, what I was going to say is not on results. We've got a couple of Russian swimmers trying to change allegiances um, in the news as well. So uh, distance swimmer Anastasia Kiprachova. Pretty sure she's... Is she the world record holder? 1,500 short course? Well, you asking uh, me for? Sure. Oh, <laughs> she's sure. top, I think she's top three, at least. Uh, yeah. But anyway, she's going to try and move to being a French swimmer. She trains in France. Obviously, there's a lot of distance pedigree in French swimming. Um, mm -hmm. and then we've also got uh, the backstroker Mark Nikolaev who's been training in Australia he's trying to change allegiance and I guess it's a bit mm -hmm. of a desperate time when you're now a year away from the Olympics and you don't know if you're going to be able to swim yet you don't know if Russia are going to be able to compete in any capacity and I guess it's like uh, if, you, if you want to give yourself a chance you might need to change nationality you better be careful yeah. though those watermelon vendors the old pop-off getting shanked in the side by the watermelon vendor he was talking about he was talking about changing nationalities at one stage from Russia to Australia and ended up getting shanked shanked by a watermelon vendor. So you gotta be careful, mate. Don't, sorry, don't be putting that sorry, out. Sorry, what? <laughs> you didn't you didn't hear about this? Popoff no. got stabbed. You know Popoff got stabbed, right? No. You didn't know Popoff got stabbed? Was no. it on the podcast? Yeah, it's on the podcast. Even Nathan knows this. Come on, mate. I've watched uh, the podcast. I don't remember this story. Popoff got stabbed. Uh, the uh, Google it right now. Google Popoff gets stabbed, and you'll you'll see it pop up. Popoff got shanked in Russia because, um, well, there's a lot of theories, you know, a lot of theories. But I, I wouldn't I, be talking I, about changing nationalities. I quite like the Popoff uh, uh, podcast because he has like documentaries as well on YouTube. You can watch on him. They're quite oh. interesting. Wasn't he like mm. ten years? Um, in as well, something like that. In like ten years, what? Oh, ten years yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He he was um, he was he was he was the he was the best at, at what he did back then, mate. He he was he just changed the game, you know. Like he took he took sprinting to a whole different stratosphere, and then he got shanked, and uh, <laughs> he did. I'm telling you, he got stabbed. Yeah. I mean, he got stabbed viciously. Like the thing that the thing that stabbed him too was, it, you know, the things that cut watermelons. Like it had a hook on it. This guy hooked him, <laughs> and and got him right in the guts. Yeah. See, look, even even the even Matt knows about it. Everybody knows about the pop off stabbing. Come on. Um, you guys wouldn't be changing your nationality, right? Like Irish all the way, hey? 
Yeah, that's yeah. it. I just got a. Oh, we just got a tattoo, actually. I got a shamrock on my ankle. Oh, the shamrock. Nice. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, Ireland all the way, I guess. <laughs> I love it. Who's your uh, favorite Irish athlete? Like, over oh, all time? Or any yeah. sport? Yeah. Well, any uh, sport. Any sport. I mean, obviously, Conor McGregor. Yes, there it <laughs> yeah. is. That was a setup. That was a setup question. I was going to see if you were going to go yeah, with Conor. Actually- same birthday as it does. Yeah, we've got the same birthday as him. Same birthday. Oh, triplets. I like that. <laughs> did uh did have you guys ever met him? No, no. never actually. Come on, let's get Maybe this organized. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You guys win the Olympics, he'll be all over you for sure. <laughs> uh, absolutely. All right. I think we're pushing up on, on an hour here. This has been pretty fun. Uh Sonny, you got anything left for the lads? No, nah, I think we've uh well. Just uh, you don't have to answer it, Dan. But uh, I know you said you you wanted to, you had some times in mind for the meet last weekend. But I know you've got a little list of of goals. Would you be willing to share any of them or any any future goals? I mean, you've talked outrightly you want the world record, but uh... I think I uh, won't. Well, no, I'm going to share my time goals. But I I mean, I want to. I said in an interview that I want that world record, that world championship, and that that Olympic gold medal. So. I mean, that's why I always wanted when I was younger. So I'm just going to keep working towards that. And, and Nathan, I guess, when are you going to go sub 15 long course? When's, when's the plan to do that? Oh, uh, I don't, I, I don't think I'll come this year because of uh, me just switching or whatever. But I think he'll what? come next year. I think. Yeah, and, the, and, and, in, I'm, I'm also like, do you have a focus meet for this summer as well? Like, wh- where will you go race and, um, and 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 rest again and get after it? Well, I haven't, I haven't actually decided on that. I think we're actually talking about that this week with Andy, for me anyway. I haven't decided on where I'm going to race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should also mention that there's um, Len under-23s are in Dublin too, yes. so it's going to yes. be a home, home championship for me. So it's going to be great. So you're, are, you, are you both doing that then? I'm not. I'm Nathan's not. not, but I am, yeah. Okay. Straight after the world, I think. Okay, that's cool. That's exciting. How come you, you boys don't sound as Irish as I, I would have thought? How come you don't sound like super Irish? Uh, well, we are we're Northern Irish, I guess, but um, I don't know. My one of my parents are like kind of English, so uh, they're both from. They were both born in England, in Leeds. So mm, okay. uh, I, I guess their accent kind of rubbed off on us. And then we also live in England uh, right now, oh. but. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, like, you, normally you'd hear like a really strong kind of like a Connor. Connor has a really thick kind of Irish accent, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but yeah, I guess it's the North and South thing, though, because Northern Irish people don't sound anything like Southern Irish people. So, what's the difference between North and South? Is there is there um, are you guys united as a country, or is there is it totally split? It's, uh, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know the situation. It's like, uh, well, Northern Ireland is part of the UK and Southern Ireland doesn't. That's you weird, isn't I mean? it? But, yeah, but in terms of swimming, you can, Northern Irish swimmers can choose to either be like compete for Ireland or compete for Great Britain. So you get the choice, I guess. Wow. You guys say, you guys say to each other, what's the crack? Uh, uh yeah, well, not here, obviously, because there's not really that many Irish swimmers. Well, I guess uh, well, there's an Irish backstroke who trains with us, um, and he called Connor, and he we'd say it to him, but at home, yeah, he'd say it a lot more. <laughs> what does it mean? Tell the people out there, what does it mean? Like what's go, what's going on, or what's up? You know what I mean? What's up? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, a lot of people in the comments. <laughs> the comments are blowing up today. Political, religious, black hole bread is going down. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm going down, so let's get out of it really quick. I don't, I don't need some Northern Irish guys on me. Now, let's get off it. Um, all right, boys. Listen, this has been fun. We've gone, we've gone everywhere. We've gone into Northern Ireland. We've gone into Twins. We've gone into World Swimming. Uh, we've even had some competitions, some comp- on the pod. So it's, uh, it's been fun. This has been good. I appreciate it, boys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tell everyone where they can find you again, social media. Uh, well, watch our weekly vlogs on YouTube uh, on Whiffin Twins, our channel name, and then you can just find us on Instagram and our names on the screen. Whiffin Twins, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Everybody get on the Whiffin Twins. Check it out. Good stuff, boys. Sunny, good stuff again. Keep that camera, mate. You look good today. Jeez, I need some light. I might need to is get that, a light. 
is that the thing in the shower you were using as well? What yeah, was it? What is the it? One blade, the one blade channel sponsor. I don't have one handy. Yeah, one blade. yeah. How come you took us in the shower with you on your social media? Was that? I, I, I just have to do what I have to do to get sponsors now, and if that means showering in front of thousands of people, then you know that's what I'm prepared to do. Do you really go to bed with your swimsuit on? I do. Wow. Swimsuit guy, what sleeps in a swimsuit? I actually, I've just, actually, I've just got a parcel from Japan. I'm really excited about this. There's some new swimsuits. Just about to open it. Oh, oh, you're gonna do a, an opening on on a vlog? Yeah. Has the swimsuit guy ever done 24 hours in a, a suit in a tax suit? Absolutely not. Why would I do that? <laughs> I thought YouTube you slept video. in it. They're so uncomfortable. You know that. Come on, boys. They're so uncomfortable. You know what? Actually, fun fact. I can find pictures of this. I went to you know, like you know, your last day of school. You kind of do fancy dress or wear whatever. Like year eleven, sixteen, right? Yeah. Me and a few mates who weren't even swimmers. We all put like the 09 body suits on and went to school for the last day of school. So uh, I wore a blue seventy for the last day of school. We did that a set. About. Yeah, we. I've done a set in the full in the 2009 body suits. You're absolutely flying, man. So. Come on, tell, tell us times. Don't just tell us you flew. Oh, on, oh, it was a long time ago. It yeah, was like 2016, so I wouldn't even know what times I went. But yeah, I remember just fine. I, yeah, It feels totally different, though. Yeah, it does, yeah. Sonny, is there a new jacket suit? There is. There's a new jacket jam. I think it's called the J Chrono. It was announced yesterday. If jackets send me one, I'll review it. If they don't send me one, I won't review it. Will you ask, <laughs> ask them to send you one? Yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask him to send me one. Yeah. All right, let's get a review on here. I want to see this. This is this is the suit that uh, changed the game back in 2009. So hopefully, you think it's a game changer now? No. No. <laughs> They're not going <laughs> to send it to you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. All right, boys, get back to training. God, what do you, you can't take an hour off. Get back in the pool. <laughs> Distance swimmers, you got to go all day. Let's go. All right. See you, boys. Catch me, guys. Yeah.